Some of you have seen on my Instagram story that I went kimono shopping and you have requested a haul. So here is a haul. And I think I haven't done one of those videos in a very long time. In case you're here for the first time, my name is Billy Matsunaga and I'm a fully trained and certified kimono teacher and stylist. And I wear kimono every single day. Not every single day, but... I wear this almost every day. So I have a lot of kimono in my closet. Right now I'm trying not to buy a huge quantity of kimono at once anymore because I already have about 200 of them. And when I buy new kimono, I usually try to sort one of my older ones out that I'm not wearing that much anymore or it's just not my style anymore. Many different reasons. And that is why I haven't done a haul in a very long time because when I buy a kimono, it's one kimono here, one kimono there, one over here and one over there. But over the months, it's getting quite a big pile. <laughs> Today, I'm going to show you the kimono that I have purchased for this year's autumn and winter during the summer months and last month in September. Let's get started, I think, with the kimono I actually have on right now. I was waiting to actually be able to wear this kimono because it's October and we still have 32 degrees in Kumamoto. So you can bet that I'm still wearing my summer wardrobe because it's simply just too hot. This kimono is an unlined kimono, it's a hitoe. It's a specific silk weave that is called tsumugi. And not very tsumugi-like, this one is a very, very lightweight tsumugi. I really love the color and especially the woven elements in it just really got to me and I had to bring it home with me. But I have to say this one has one of the weirdest tailorings on it that I have ever seen. So I think someone actually has probably sewed this at home and this is not made by a professional kimono tailor. I have to be honest that I seriously think that the weird tailoring is one of the reasons why this kimono was this cheap. This kimono was 800 yen and at the currency right now this would be less than six dollars or six euros. Keep in mind just to make this video a tiny bit more understandable also for people who watch this in the future I'm gonna rather say how much the money is worth here, which means about 100 yen in Japan is about one euro or one dollar in the US. So let's just keep it easy and say this kimono was about 800 yen, which is about eight euros or eight dollars. I picked up this kimono at a store that is called Nakamura, I think. I'm gonna link them down below. They are a kimono recycle store placed in Osaka. I knew about them, but I actually went there for the very first time. And they have a whole room filled with kimono items that are all 800 yen. And this was one of those kimono. It has a fairly big size, which means I can actually wear it quite comfy. And it is, as I already said, super lightweight. So even for a day like this, where we have up to 30 degrees. I kind of can wear this, but I have paired it with a summer undergarment. For the obi, I actually wear obi I bought, I think, last year at a thrift store, random thrift store in Kumamoto. And I also bought this obi for 500 yen, which is $5 or 5 euros. And at the same thrift store this year, just a few weeks ago, I have picked up this obi age and the obijime. These thrift stores are so smart because they usually really pull out the autumn colors in autumn. When we get into September, I can stop myself from buying autumn colors because come on, they're just too pretty. I think I will get a lot of use out of the obijime actually because it's very autumnal right now but I think it lets it style itself with many different kimono, many different obi for many different seasons. Next up is a kimono I also got at the, uh, this 800 yen room. It is this very, very gorgeous Iromuji. Ah, oh, this is probably right now my favorite kimono. My favorite kimono changes a lot, but this one is just 
First of all, the pattern, the woven pattern on it is hikaki. Hikaki is basically a very Japanese wooden fence made of a tree that is called hinoki and they cut the wood into tiny slices or they really slice it into thin slices and then they put it together into a fence it actually turns exactly into this pattern it's one of my absolute favorite patterns i love japanese traditional geometric patterns and this is one of them but the color is just look at the color <laughs> i hope it comes across right on camera it is gray, it is a silver gray, but it has this super lavender undertone. It's rather closer to a purple than it is to gray gray. When I brought this back home with me, um, I was just throwing it on randomly to try it on and show my hubby what I got. And he was kind of like, just the way you walk in it, I can just feel that you love this kimono. So this kimono again was from Nakamura. It was in the 800 yen kimono room, which means this one was 800 yen, which is about $8 or eight euros. For this video, for me, it was really clear what obi I'm gonna style this with because this is an obi I got also in a random thrift store in Kumamoto. It is this Uroko pattern black and silver Nagoya obi. This one was, by the way, 500 yen, which is about five dollars or five euro. I found this obi and I thought it's just perfect for so many different kimono I have in my closet. And for this video, it was really clear for me that I want to make this monotone outfit with the gray kimono and only black, white and silver items. I think this outfit turned out so awesome. I seriously didn't want to take it off today. Besides the room with the 800 yen kimono, they have two more rooms filled with kimono. All of them really, really cheap. And I found this kimono. Just love at first sight. When I would describe it, this color is black, but it's very blue black. So it, I would either, I would rather say this is almost midnight blue and it has yellow flowers on it. This kimono is fairly big, which means it has a really good size for me. And it was about 2000 yen, which is about $20 or 20 euros. Unfortunately, what I found out later when I had a look is that this kimono was really well loved. It was probably worn quite a lot because the hem is actually damaged and the inside of the kimono is really dirty. There are a lot of stains on the inside and I think this kimono is gonna require retailing very, very soon. But that's fine, kimono are made to be retailed actually. And I paired this kimono with an obi I am so excited about. I also found this at Nakamura and this one was, I think, 3000 yen. This obi is a so-called kumi obi, which means the fabric of this obi is not woven. It is braided like a kumi himo, like your obijime is. You can tell because the grain of the fabric is not going in a 90 degree angle on the fabric. It is like on the bias, it's in a 45 degree angle, which means you have the lines going over it diagonal. And that is an indicator for a braided obi. You call those kumi obi. And I was looking for a kumi obi for such a long time. When I heard about it for the very first time, I really wanted one. And when I found this, there, there was just no way to leave it in the store, especially because it was really, really cheap. Kumi obi are really expensive, believe me. And finding one used in that price range is really good. Also, the colors are very autumnal and I also like the gradient on it. So this obi is gonna get a lot of use. And what I also should mention is that the kimono with those 2000 yen actually came with a matching haori. It is an 
ensemble is what you call this in Japanese ensemble and it means that the original tamono the kimono fabric was long enough to make a kimono out of it and a matching haori I know that not a lot of people like ensembles but I personally I'm a big fan of it I love ensembles <laughs> so again basically 2000 yen for two pieces that is really really cheap I also paired this whole outfit with a new obi age that I have picked up in a thrift store for 500 yen in Kumamoto. It was one of my lucky days. I went in and I just found this one color as an obi age I was looking for a very long time. Unfortunately, this obi age is a very flimsy dinzu silk. It's one of the very, very thin silks. But I can work with them really well and if you want to tie your obi age better I am linking my video of how to tie obi age with all my tricks down below and in the top right corner. Next up is one of the more expensive things I have bought this summer. I don't really want to say the price out loud but I'm gonna because you're gonna think it's gonna be probably more expensive than it actually was. So Osaka means I'm visiting my friend's store Kokoroya. If you haven't watched our video together, I'm going to link it down below in the top right corner. And Kokoroya has a line of different kimono items made of textiles that were imported from other Asian countries. The reason why he does this is because he wants to show where actually the Japanese techniques are coming from originating in and that you can use also these fabrics or textiles to make kimono items and he has this line of Thai silk obi and uh, finally eventually after years <laughs> of wanting one I finally bought one it is just absolutely gorgeous the silk is made in Thailand and it has quite a stiff interfacing I typed this for the very first time today so it was really really careful with how to fold the obi so i can probably fold it in half because as you can see this is a kyofukuro obi which means it is just open all the way but it has the length of a nagoya obi so it's a casual obi you can tie any formal obi musubi with it and it has a different front and back fabric so it has a wrong side and actual right side he actually told me that he made this nagoya obi to really look good in a ginza musubi so that is what I tied with it. I tied it in a ginza musubi and oh, I was so stiff so I actually tied the obi on the front it's good when you have more dressing techniques in your head so you can adjust to the thing you have in front of you. And the kimono I wore with it is actually one of my new kimono, but I didn't purchase this one. This one was actually presented to me from a former colleague I was working with together at my old office job. And this is a Edo Komon I received from her. Edo Komon is one of my absolute favorite kimonos in, in general. Oh, but the pair on it is just... Oh, and the Color. this kimono is just so everything and it's so soft and nice and I'm gonna give this one a really really long and good life in my house no worries yeah because of uh, this OB this was the most expensive outfit I'm gonna show you this OB was 50,000 yen which is about $500 or 500 euros yeah, new kimono items are expensive, but believe me, that is already on the cheap side. Wearing kimono in the end is not cheap. You can buy a lot of secondhand kimono as I do and wear them on a daily basis. But sometimes it's nice to have just a new design in your closet. Okay, next up or last kimono is this pretty. <laughs> I found this also in a thrift store, random thrift store in Kumamoto and this one was 500 yen, so it was 5 dollars or 5 euros. And this one is an unlined kimono, again no lining, so it's a hitoya and it's 100% silk and it's a chidi men silk. And yes, it's so easy to put on. Just because it's chidi men, it's such a pleasure to work with. And what I really like about this kimono is that it's very autumnal without having the normal autumn 
uh, colors because the pattern on it shows a specific type of grass that is called Suzuki. And Suzuki is this grass you see a lot on Japanese countryside in September, October, and in the autumn months. And it is very, very autumnal just because of its pattern. I like to have kimono like this that are for a specific season but not necessarily have that season's color palette because when I wear kimono, <laughs> in the same color palette for a few months. Believe me, I'm really getting sick of it. And I paired this kimono with this obi. This obi has this violet yellow gradient and I also got it at Nakamura in the 800 yen kimono room. So it was about 800 yen, which is $8 or 8 euros. And when I was in the store, I have to be honest, I actually thought this might be polyester. I didn't take it out of the bag it was in. I was kind of like, well, yeah, if, it, if it's polyester, I don't care. Brought it back home, take a closer look, took a closer look and found out that it is 100% silk. And also I'm 99.9% .9 sure that this OB is actually a Hakata Ori. Hakata Ori means translated Hakata weave. Hakata is the old name of the city Fukuoka in Fukuoka prefecture. Side note, main station in Fukuoka is still called Hakata. And every obi that is woven in Hakata is called Hakata Ori, Hakata weave. It is very famous for a specific type of pattern that's called Kenjo Gara. But just because the obi has a Kenjo Gara on it or not, does not tell you if it's a Hakata Ori or not. It's the way how it's woven because Hakata Ori is woven in a very specific way. So it is probably one of the easiest Obis to actually pinpoint and identify. So I'm 99.9% .9 sure that this is a Hakata Ori. Hakata Ori, by the way, are with the easiest Obis to tie in with among all the kimono weaves and textiles. This is just extremely easy to tie. So a pleasure to work with. Anyway, when I look around me, <laughs> this is no fun to put away people. Those were a lot of outfits. That's gonna be, it's gonna take a few hours to put away. But I hope you had fun watching this video. Tell me in the comments down below, which one was your favorite outfit or what was your favorite item I have showed you in uh, this video. If you like this video, leave me a thumbs up or a comment down below to actually tell me or share this video with your friends. It would really help me out a lot. If you're new here and you want to learn more about kimono from a professional kimono teacher who also wears kimono every day, feel free to subscribe. I would be really happy to have you here and I talk to you in my next kimono adventure. Bye.